The standard would create new markets for farm products used to produce these fuels. The standard would increase our energy security by making us less vulnerable to instability, uh, to the instability of oil prices on the world market. Six months can be an eternity on Capitol Hill. Modern ethanol policy is a classic example of shifting political winds in light of recent economic events. Just six months ago, in December 2007, President Bush signed a sweeping energy bill. The measure demands higher fuel efficiency for cars and trucks and an aggressive mandate for biofuel production. The bill I signed today takes a significant step by, because it will require fuel producers to use at least 36 billion gallons of biofuel in 2022. This is nearly a five-fold increase over current levels. It will help us diversify our energy supplies and reduce our dependence on oil. It's an important part of this legislation, and I thank the members of Congress for your wisdom. Many members of Congress that Bush thanked in 2007 have shifted their position on a renewable fuels mandate. In six months' time, gas prices have skyrocketed, food costs have soared, global hunger has grown, and many lawmakers and pundits are pointing the finger at corn-based ethanol. The price of food, as we know, is going up dramatically all over the world, including the United States of America. And Arizona senator and presidential and candidate John McCain is one of 24 Republican senators requesting the Environmental Protection Agency to either revise or completely waive the newly minted biofuels mandate. In the past month, major congressional committee hearings have probed if and how ethanol may be driving high food and energy costs. I understand that, that Chevron blends about 40 percent of its uh, or 40 percent uh, of gasoline that you sell in the United States has ethanol in it. Can you speak to us about volatility in price that is specifically and documented related to ethanol and that mix? Is that driving gas up or not? Eth ethanol prices have, uh, have been pretty volatile over the last yeah. couple of years, but I think it's a very small part, frankly, of the price of gasoline. I think it's been already testified, you know, 70 percent of the price of gasoline is crude oil. 15% okay. uh, of the price of gasoline is taxes. Even though ethanol is about 5% okay. of our gasoline, that volatility hasn't had much of an effect. In an April hearing, oil company executives pointed towards crude oil and the growing power of speculators in the commodity markets as the root cause of high prices at the pump. When you look at the fundamentals of our business, Congressman, the supply-demand fundamentals, our assessment would be the price should be somewhere around $50, $55 a barrel. There's a disconnect. To me, there's three factors that contribute to that. One is the uh, monetary issue of the weaker dollars we've already talked about. The other is geopolitical risk. And the third, we believe, is speculation. A recent study at Iowa State University claims a growing ethanol market has actually lowered gas prices by as much as 39 cents in the Midwest. But even if ethanol critics concede the renewable fuel isn't driving gas prices higher, costs at the checkout counter are another story. Prices for commodities like corn, beans, and wheat have jumped dramatically over the past year. Biofuel critics have drawn a direct link from ethanol to high corn costs to even higher grocery prices to worldwide starvation. A United Nations report blasted the use of food as an energy source and called American biofuel production a crime against humanity. The connection between food, fuel, starvation, and ethanol has led some farm state lawmakers to push back hard. And I don't think farmers can be responsible for the high cost of food. I went out this morning and bought a, a big box of cornflakes for $5. Uh, it would be about a, a nickel that the farmer gets out of this box of cornflakes. Iowa Senator Charles Grassley is a staunch defender of corn-based ethanol. In a recent press conference, Grassley characterized the renewable fuel as a scapegoat for economic problems. When a farmer gets so little out of a box of cornflakes, don't be blaming the farmer and ethanol for the high price of food. You know, I get the impression that people think that they're eating this corn. This is what we make ethanol out of. Now, I don't know whether people that are complaining about corn increasing the price of food or not, they, maybe they think it's the sweet corn. I don't know. But take one of these kernels here and, uh, and, uh, and chew on it. It's, 
It's not something that you would sit down to your, to your kitchen table and eat. Farm state lawmakers like Grassley have reached a boiling point following months of negative newspaper editorials and scathing magazine covers. But many biofuel critics claim there is truth behind ethanol forcing high costs at the supermarket. Perhaps the strongest link is meat prices. Farmers and ranchers are paying much more for corn-based feed needs in the world of $6 corn. But evidence points to a stronger relationship with high transportation costs for all grocery items. Bruce Babcock, director of the Center for Agriculture and Rural Development at Iowa State University, claims the picture is not as clear as either side insists. You can't ask agriculture to do more of everything. That if you want agriculture to supply fuel, in the short run in the United States, it's going to come from corn. Babcock has examined the potential effects of pulling back the renewable fuel standard, ethanol blenders credit, and America's import tariff on ethanol. Some lawmakers have proposed those steps as a way to slash food costs. So we found that if, in fact, you got rid of all three instruments, the import tariff, the RFS, and the blender's credit, then the price of corn would drop by about 13%. A 13% drop in corn prices may not result in a similar drop in consumer grocery costs. But a pullback in government support could hurt rural America's burgeoning ethanol industry. A worldwide strain on global grain has been heavily affected by growing demand in countries like India and China. But the main food source in the developing world is rice, not corn. And Babcock has found minimal proof that domestic corn ethanol is pinching global rice supplies. There's no doubt that the ethanol biofuels industry in the United States has affected the price of corn and the price of soybeans, and to a lesser extent, the price of soybean oil and vegetable oils probably not the price of wheat or rice, and I think that's been the biggest misunderstanding. For Market to Market, I'm Andrew Butler.